or they're just going to turn over and say, oh, well, we're uh, missing today, that's it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. Today we celebrate the Mass for the third Sunday of Lent. Our procession this morning in my father's house. Please rise. Size group for the change of time. The rest will be with us at 11:30. <laughs> but as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we take a moment and we call to mind anything that's in need of God's healing. You came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You now sit at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. <clears throat> o God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may be always lifted up by your mercy. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And as we begin the Liturgy of the Word, would the young people please come forward. Well, Pam, as you go forth, though, please come up. Please come up. So as you go forth to reflect upon God's holy word, may it take root deeply in your hearts, and may you know how much God loves you. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go, 
the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites crawled there and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert. Where your fathers tempted me, they tested me though they had seen my works. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though, per though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Gospel, according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well, and it was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. 
His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews had nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our, ja our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. And the woman said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for, or why are you talking with her? The woman left her jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, in four months the harvest will be there? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying is verified, that one sows and another reaps. I have sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard it for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think we all go through various stages in our spiritual life, and sometimes we feel very close to God. We feel that God is very close to us. We can almost touch his presence. And then other times, God seems like he is a million miles away. Have you ever had that experience? You know, we pray. You know, we pray the way we always have. We pray the rosary or the scripture readings or whatever form of prayer we're faithful to. And we don't feel good. We don't feel bad. We really don't feel much of anything at all. And, you know, sometimes people have shared with me that this has gone on in their own lives for a very long time. Um, it's painful. You know, this can go on for days, go on for weeks, even months or longer. And in my opinion, that is probably the single hardest thing in the Christian life is to be trying to pray and to feel like we're getting nowhere. You know, and there's a term for that, that that often gets used, spiritual dryness. You know, Sometimes we feel spiritually dry. Uh, I've been through a couple of periods like that in my own life, and one of them was many years ago when I was in seminary. 
I was sent to Africa for a year. It was my pastoral year. I was placed in Tanzania. And it was a great experience in so many different ways. But it led me to a state of spiritual dryness that lasted for well over a year. And I don't really know yet what the cause of it was. You know, certainly there was a lot of poverty and suffering in Tanzania, and I'm sure that had something to do with it. Also, I was placed at the seminary in Tanzania, and it was a seminary that was run by Polish priests who had a very traditional, old-style model of seminary. And so God was presented in a legalistic way. You know, there was one professor there that I think he was, to be frank, just flat-out crazy. Um, <laughs> taught sacraments, of all things. And he was teaching us how to hear confessions. And he said that if somebody leaves the confessional before getting absolution, you can absolve them for up to 25 feet. You know, apparently at 26 feet, God stops forgiving. And I, I never figured out what he meant by that. But when I got back to the States, I asked an old priest. He said, that is an old case study. And what the point of it is, you can't hear confessions over the phone. You, know, you have to hear it in person. But this guy took it in a slightly different direction. But... All of that, that whole experience, threw me into the state of spiritual dryness. And so I still said my prayers, still went to daily Mass, but the living God seemed a million miles away. And I felt like I was an outsider in my own church. And there was only one scripture passage that I could relate to that year, and it was from Psalm 41. A deadly thing is fastened to my soul, and I will not rise again. And I think many people one way or another can relate to that. You know, everyone goes through periods of spiritual dryness. Life gets overwhelming. You know, when we're grieving, when we're sick, sometimes prayer becomes difficult. It's without emotion. And usually when that happens, we blame ourselves. You know, I'm doing something wrong. Other people don't have this. What am I doing wrong? They may think they're losing their faith. In fact, I think some people stop going to Mass and stop actively practicing their faith because somehow we've been given this message that we don't have faith unless we always feel it, that it's somehow this kind of emotion. You know, so what do we do when we find ourselves in a period of spiritual dryness? You know, different people are going to say different things were helpful, but one thing that was extremely helpful for me was the advice of the saints. And so I'd like to just take a look at that for a moment. What do the saints tell us? All the spiritual writers, with, writers will tell us the same thing. Stay faithful. Keep praying. Don't make any big changes. Don't stop going to Mass. Just stay faithful and trust that God is present even if you're not feeling it in the moment. In fact, many of these same saints wrote that when we stay faithful to prayer, even when we're not feeling something, even for a long time not feeling something, that that's when the soul is closest to God because we're doing it out of sheer faith and not because of some kind of emotional or spiritual payoff. You know, there's one example I'd like to share briefly, and that's St. Therese of Lisieux, that famous cloistered French nun from the late 19th century. Therese went into the convent at the age of 15. She died of tuberculosis at the age of 24. And everyone thought she was a very faithful nun, and she certainly was. What they didn't know was for the last two years of her life, as she was slowly dying of tuberculosis, she found herself doubting the existence of the afterlife. And she even found herself sometimes struggling with God's existence. And she accepted that as a cross she had to carry for a while. Um, she wrote with very much common sense. She wrote to a friend once, I will be forced to sit at the table of the atheists for as long as the good Lord allows. And to me, that's the ultimate state, statement of faith in God. Just like that guy in the gospel that says to Jesus, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. She made that decision. She was going to stay faithful no matter what, even if she was tempted against faith. And lo and behold, on her deathbed, she had this amazing mystical experience of God's loving presence, and she died in that state. But certainly, when she was in the middle of it, can you imagine dying at such a young age, closed up in a convent, and the very thing you dedicated your life to starts to feel unreal? You know. But she's a doctor of the church because she said, I'm going to stay faithful no matter what. And one other thing that I think can help us when we're dealing with spiritual dryness is the gospel itself. You know, to stick with Jesus in the gospel, to trust him at his word, and especially to go to those places in the gospel where Jesus himself struggled. You know, to join him in the desert, to join him in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, to be there at the cross when he prays, Father, why have you abandoned me? You know, we can always 
relate to Jesus at those times when we struggle because he struggled with us. And I think today's gospel can be really helpful because here we have this woman who had gone through several husbands and no doubt she felt very removed from God. You know, and perhaps on those days when she may have felt close to God, there were plenty of people around her to tell her she shouldn't feel close to God. And the very fact that she's coming to the well in the middle of the day in the heat to get water shows how much she was ostracized from the community. Because normally the women would go and get water early in the day before it got hot. She goes at midday when it's hot to avoid all of them. And yet what does Jesus say to her? You know, I'm going to give to you this wellspring of living water, and it will never go dry. And so on those days when we may not be feeling that well of living water, we don't have to. The well, the water is there no matter what. We can't feel that our body is made up almost entirely of water, and yet that water is there keeping us alive. And the same thing certainly is true of that spiritual water that keeps us alive. You know, just a couple of other things that we can do when we're experiencing spiritual dryness. One is we turn to our fellow believers, you know, our friends, maybe the people we made a retreat with, the people we know are close to God. You know, we can speak to them. You know, and part of our ministry as evangelizers is to evangelize each other, to be available to each other so that when someone is struggling, we can be there for them. And when our turn comes, they'll be there for us to just share our faith with each other. And then a second thing that can be very helpful when we're experiencing spiritual dryness is to keep praying even if we have to make some adjustments to how we pray. You know, when we're sick, when we're grieving or preoccupied, we may not be able to pray the way that we normally do. You know, five years ago, my nephew here in St. Louis died very suddenly. And for about two months after that, still did Mass every day, still said the office and the rosary every day, but to sit silently in God's presence with my thoughts was impossible. For a couple of months, I didn't pray that way. I could say prayers, but I couldn't just sit there alone with myself in God's presence. And God was okay with that. I certainly knew that God was present, even if I wasn't able to pray that I normally would. One final thing is trust. Because all of this really comes down to trust. The act of trust and the choice to trust. You know, and one of the things we remember when we're in spiritual dryness, we trust that it will come to an end. Spiritual dryness always comes to an end. We make that act of trust because we know the day will come when we will experience once again that emotional sense of God's love and God's presence. We just have to hang in there. St. Therese, she experienced on her deathbed. You know, on Good Friday for Jesus, it was almost impossible to envision Easter, and yet Easter came anyway. And so we make that act of trust that if right now, or tomorrow, or at some time in the future, we're struggling with spiritual dryness, we'll remember the saints, we'll remember our fellow believers, we'll remember Jesus at Gethsemane, and trust that God is present. There is a beautiful passage from the book of Deuteronomy that is very helpful, you know, it is I, the Lord, your God, who carried you all along your journey as a father carries his child. You know, God is carrying us at every moment, even when we don't always feel it. And so we simply make an act of trust in that and keep moving forward. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And trusting in God's absolute love for us, we offer up our prayers and our petitions to him. For the church, that through us, Christ may be a source of living water to all who are seeking God. We pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase of generosity in our nation, that those in need may find the necessary resources to lead full and healthy lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are preparing for baptism, First Communion and Confirmation this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, that God may touch their lives with healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Aretha Wise, mother of Linda and Marie Wise, and Phyllis Burtz, cousin of Joanne Harris and Gail Milner. We pray to the Lord. We pause to call to mind the attentions we carry in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of faith. May it always dwell within our hearts and may it manifest and how we treat one another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, so to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech a pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith, that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks as with the angels, praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and give, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated for a moment. First of all, we have the winners of the Black History Trivia, and those are Gail Milner, Gwen Chambers, and Valerie Howard. Right. And so congratulations. Gail might have been a earlier mass. Um, also, a couple of important reminders of things to be at. Um, one is the Deanery-wide Communal Reconciliation Service at the Rock Church, and that's going to have our North City Deanery Choir, praise, worship, reflection, opportunity for a sacrament of reconciliation. All the priests of North City will be there, so be able to see Father Bob and, and some of the other guys. They'll all, all be there to help with confessions. That's Wednesday, March 29th, 6.15 p.m. And the other very important event is the evangelization morning, and that's April 1st at 9 a.m. That is specifically for the North City Deanery. Um, we're going to have a chance to be with our fellow believers from the other North City parishes, um, and we'll have the opportunity to talk about our faith in Jesus. And we know each other already, but I think anytime we talk about our love for Jesus, that knowledge of one another deepens. And that's so important as we move towards all things new and Pentecost. So please make sure you sign up for that. Um, go to our parish website, click the link, you'll be able to sign up for it. There's also, it's in the bulletin, and there's a flyer. Uh, next weekend, on uh, March 19th, that's normally the Feast of St. Joseph. It's been moved to Monday because we're in Lent and we focus on the Lenten readings. But we're going to have a St. Joseph table at the back of church. And what it is, it's an altar, three tiers. It'll have the image of St. Joseph, some flowers, and then loaves of St. Joseph bread that will bless and you'll be able to take home with you. So that'll be next weekend at Mass. Now also next weekend at Mass, at the request of Archbishop Rosansky, we'll, we will have a second collection for the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, you know, where tens of thousands of people were killed, just so much devastation. That will be an actual second collection since we don't have envelopes for this. And so we'll just take up a collection twice. Second one will be for, for the earthquake victims. Um, you heard this in the, the prayers of the faithful, but the funeral for Aretha Weiss, mother of Linda and Marie Weiss, will be this coming Tuesday, March 14th. And it's going to be at A.L. Beale Funeral Home. Uh, visitation is at 10 a.m., and then the funeral service will be at 11 a.m. with burial at Calvary afterwards. Um, Aretha was in her 90s. She lived with her two daughters, Marie and with Linda, so some of you know them. Um, and then also we have the tradition of quilts. And, you know, because of COVID and so many things, um, we're playing some catch-up, but our quilt ministry is so dedicated. And so both Kathleen Hess and Janet Bradley lost loved ones recently, and so... Uh, would you please come forward, quilt ministry? Uh, uh, shawl ministry. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a quilt. <laughs> Very beautiful shawls. Loving God, we ask you to bless. We ask you to bless these shawls. These reminders, both of your eternal love and the love of this community. And these shawls represent the prayers of so many that have been wrapped around both Kathleen and Janet during this time of loss. And we remember today in a special way, both Blaze and Charles, may they rest in peace and may these be a reminder of your tremendous love for each one of us. And may Almighty God bless these shawls in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Do we have any visitors today? Okay. Uh, well, please stand and have a wonderful week. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, 
And in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and of their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. A recessional, this little light. Thank you.